Hi everybody, I'm Shane and today we're going to be trying out our new heavy duty tree puller. Uh, we're in a thick forested area here and we're, we have a variety of trees uh, ranging from basswood to popple. Most are between 3 to 8 inches in diameter. But we're definitely going to try some of the heavier trees. Our heavy duty tree puller has a lot of features that make it uh, a lot better than a standard tree puller. First of all, it's built a lot heavier so it works better on heavy uh, large skid steers like our T770 here. The main features of the jaws are that they're made out of one inch thick T1 steel and they're backed up with uh, reinforcing plates made out of half inch A36 and half inch gussets made out of T1 that, full, that run the full length of the jaw so you, it's uh, incredibly stiff all the way to the point and that's important because the way you use this tree puller is not just for grabbing trees and, and pulling on them but also for digging and snipping and pulling out roots so you can actually pull and move trees faster that way because you're getting down into the uh, the root area of the tree. Uh, also it works quite a bit better than a stump bucket because you're able to pinch in a horizontal movement and pinch those roots down low whereas a stump bucket you don't have that ability. It's uh, If it has a grapple it's pinching in the vertical motion. I'm excited to give this a try. Uh, we're going to try a few larger trees. There's some oak trees here too. We have a large area that the landowner is probably going to make a food plot here, uh, maybe about an acre or, or even larger, and there's really a pretty thick stand of trees here, so it should give us a really good test today. Another feature of this uh, frame is that the uh, it has the cylinder hidden back behind the jaws, so we have one single large cylinder. What what that allows you to do is keep it protected from any of the action that's going on out here. Some other tree pullers have. Uh, cylinders are they're on the side but we have a lot more mechanical advantage by hiding the cylinder back behind the jaws. Uh, these jaws are uh, over three feet long from pivot to tip and from the mounting plate forward it's almost 54 inches of total reach so you can really dig deep uh, under the trees to grab those roots. Uh, everything is built really heavy and strong obviously uh, when you have these large skid steers like this they have to have a really strong structure to withstand all the lifting loads so um, other than that I think we'll just start plugging away here and see what happens. So I wanted to explain a little bit more about the pinch force that we have here with this geometry. We have a 5 inch cylinder on the back side here that at 3000 psi is putting out almost 60,000 pounds of force. And that distance is about 7 inches between the pivot point and the cylinder. And it's, it's working at a, at a 90 degree angle to the jaws most of the time. So in essence you have about 60,000 pounds of pinch force 7 inches in front of the pivot point and then half of that again at 14 inches and so on and so forth all the way out to the tip. Uh, some of the other different styles of tree pullers that have cylinders on the side, um, they might have smaller cylinders and you have to realize that those cylinders are at a steep angle to the motion of the jaw. So the pinch force at their jaw is actually quite a bit less than the, the cylinder force that you're seeing. So you got to keep that in mind when you look at at all the different tree pullers out there that this model will, will probably have a much higher pitch force out at the jaws than some of the other models out there. Okay, so we've got a good foothold here, uh, we've got a good start, we're working our way back into the woods. Uh, this is the first oak tree of significant size that we've come across and it's about a uh, five inch oak tree. I, I'm just kind of curious how it's going to work compared to these other uh, popple trees and birch trees that we've been pulling. The soil here is uh, a lot of clay, it's a little loamy and so the roots have a they're pretty well planted but uh, it's doing a good job of pulling so far. Another feature I wanted to point out right now was that 
we have these uh, bolt-on uh, serrated teeth right here. And the reason they're bolted on is so that you can take them off if you don't need that aggressive bite. Uh, where they come in handy especially is for when you uh, dig deep and pick uh, roots out of trees. So you can get down and pinch and it'll, it'll grab better than if you didn't have the serrations here. So, but you also still have the option to take them off if you don't want that aggressive cut or that aggressive bite. So uh, this is about a five inch oak tree. We're gonna pull it up right now and see how it works. Let's give it a try. So I want to discuss a little bit about what happened with that last tree. So it was very well planted in this soil. This soil is has got a lot of clay in it. It's pretty dense. It's also um, it's not terribly wet, but uh, it's very dense and the trees are really well rooted in it. But what I didn't see before was when I was trying to spear under this tree, it was a big rock right here. So that kind of prevented me from getting into the tree as well as I thought. And when I clamped the tree up higher, I clamped it a little bit too hard and I broke the tree off. So that's not the best way, obviously, to get the tree out, but I did. I was able to come back then and dig the root out underneath it. Um, and so you can still salvage that. I'm gonna dig at this rock too and see if I can just get underneath it and pinch it and then move it, so uh, just to see what it'll do. Um, something else I wanted to mention was when you come up to pinch the trees, you don't have to give it full force. There's so much gripping power with these sharp uh, serrated edges on here that you really just have to come in about halfway and uh, you have plenty of gripping force there to pull with. So you don't necessarily have to clamp it with maximum force. So let's give this rock a try and see what happens. Okay, so we just got done pulling out a fairly large popple tree and I wanted to discuss a little bit about how it worked. This tree is about 12 inches at the base and it's about 8 inches up here, you know, about 3 or 4 feet up. And I would say it's, uh, you know, 30 feet tall. Um, the soil type here is kind of a, a loam, so there's pretty heavy clay. It's pretty hard to dig into. And you can see from uh, the effort that it took to dig the roots out that it was it took a fair amount of effort it was also hard to get this tree pulled out because it was right next to another tree so it, there was limited access to the base of the tree but I wanted to discuss a little bit about the different ways that you can uh, pull trees out of the ground so for smaller trees a lot of the time and depending on the soil type you can just come up and grab the tree down low and pull it right out other times if the tree is really well rooted You'll, you might have to grab it higher up on the tree uh, and do some pushing and pulling and then get it out of the ground. But for the largest trees, you'll have to do some uh, subsoil digging. So you'll have to spear the jaws down into the ground, grab some of the larger roots like we did with this tree, and then it's pretty easy to tip it over one way or the other. And so those are kind of the three basic ways that you can use this tool to grab trees. Another thing I want to discuss is that uh, depending on what part of the jaw you use to pinch the tree, you'll either have a high pinching force or a low pinching force. So there might be smaller trees where you don't want to grab it too far up the jaw because you might just pinch it right off and, and, and uh, shear the tree almost. You don't want that to happen. You want to just pinch it. So if you want a lower pinching force, you can grab it further out in the jaw and that might help you with some of the smaller trees. Okay, so just to summarize what we've done here, uh, I, I'd say we pulled up between 20 and 30 trees of various sizes, anything from you know two inch all the way up to we pulled up a, a 10 inch popple, and we just moved them all off to the side here. So 
we've only been working about an hour off and on between taking video and whatnot, so I'm pretty happy with the progress that we've made in just an hour. Um, I think the uh, property owner is probably going to do half an acre to an acre here of clearing eventually, but uh, really happy with the conditions uh, being as tough as they are. It did pull really well. What we're going to try now is uh, go to an area that has sandier soil and has some pine trees and we'll see the differences will contrast between the, the, the loamy clay soil and the sandy soil and also the difference in trees. So we're going to go there next. So let's try that out. I wanted to point out a few more features on this heavy duty tree puller that make it uh, truly heavy duty and above and beyond any standard tree puller that you can find on the market. Uh, first of all, we're using uh, two inch pins that run the full length top to bottom and they're greasable. And inside the jaw bushing, we have replaceable steel bushings that you can, if they wear out, you can replace them and tighten it up again. So that's really important for something that's working so hard and pinching so strongly. Uh, that you can replace those wear parts if they do wear out. Uh, again, the frame here is made out of three quarter inch plate steel and we have these serrations on the front here so that you can uh, rest the larger trees against the frame when you pick them up and tilt them. Okay, to wrap up here, uh, I just wanted to show you one of the stumps we pulled out. Uh, this is a jack pine, uh, at least a 12 inch diameter stump that we had back here, so it was kind of hard to grab onto. But the nice thing about this heavy duty tree puller is that the jaws, uh, you can pinch flush with the ground, so you can grab really short stumps or stems and still get a hold of them. This one we had to do a lot of digging and prying to break off some of the roots before you could get the whole stump out. And sometimes you get lucky and you got the stump uh, or the, uh, the the tree root on the side you're working on and sometimes you're not lucky but after you break off a few of these and pull a few of them out usually you can get a hold of the stump then and, and pry it out so uh, this only took I would say about three or four minutes to pull this stump out so uh, overall though I was really impressed with the uh, pulling power of this uh, tree puller um, one thing to mention about our tree puller is that we have a single five inch cylinder and that at 3,000 psi you're getting almost 60,000 pounds of force at the cylinder and so um, with the with the geometry of our tree puller with the cylinder in the rear we're getting a lot more pinch force up front than a than a style that has cylinders on the side just because of the geometry of it so that's something to look for when you're looking at tree pullers you know the pinch force uh, at a certain distance from the pivot point so um, but again overall I'm really impressed we stressed this bobcat to the limit I mean we we had grabbed a hold of things that just couldn't budge and there's absolutely no deflection in those jaws of that tree puller so super strong uh, I dare say indestructible I'm not gonna make that claim but it's really something that's uh, overbuilt for what it's doing. That's what you want when you're working things hard like this. Be sure to check back. We're going to be making more videos of other products. And if you got any questions, feel free to give us a call or check us out on the website.